Ibrahim Traore is developing an outstanding $8 million tomato facility in Burkina Faso. Did you know that Burkina Faso produced a staggering 290,000 tons of tomatoes in 2021? Despite this, much of the harvest is exported to neighboring Ghana and a significant percentage is wasted due to the perishable nature of tomatoes. Imagine the potential if we could process these tomatoes locally. This is where President Traore's vision comes into play. Approximately 80 to 90 percent of Burkina Faso's population is engaged in agriculture, making it the backbone of the country's economy. This sector contributes significantly to the nation's GDP, with major agricultural produce including cereals such as sorghum, millet, maize and rice, as well as cash crops like cotton, groundnut, cowpea and sugarcane. Additionally, roots and tubers, cassava, sweet potato, yam, fruits and vegetables are important crops. Tomatoes are a crucial part of this agricultural landscape. West African farmers face a significant challenge, wastage. In Nigeria, over 40% of their 1.8 million metric tons of annual yield is lost due to inadequate storage and processing facilities. Burkina Faso is no different, with 30% of the tomatoes grown ending up as waste due to a lack of storage or processing facilities. Consequently, Burkina Faso imports tomato puree from Europe to meet its domestic needs. The tomato processing facility addresses this issue by enabling the local processing of tomatoes, reducing waste, and decreasing reliance on imported tomato products. This initiative not only boosts the local economy, but also provides employment opportunities and supports sustainable agricultural practices. By transforming tomatoes into various products such as paste, puree, and sauces, Burkina Faso can enhance food security, add value to its agricultural produce, and improve the livelihoods of its farmers. If Burkina Faso can preserve its local produce, the country will become self-sufficient and even have surplus for export. The current situation, where much of the hard-earned produce goes to waste, needs to change. It's time for Burkina Faso to take control of its resources. Unlike nuclear power plants, which take about 10 years to complete, a tomato processing plant takes less than a year to build. This makes it a low-hanging fruit, and that's exactly what President Ibrahim Traoré has targeted. The question arises, why did it take so long to add this value chain to tomato farming? A leader who understands economic freedom, like Captain Ibrahim Traoré, has started with the necessities first. This strategic move demonstrates a keen understanding of economic empowerment and resource management. Before we continue, please remember to like and share our videos. Also, subscribe if you haven't done so to stay informed about the latest African economic, political, and social developments and to explore how global geopolitics impact the continent. This facility isn't just about tomatoes, it's about people. Once operational, it will create 100 direct jobs and over 5,000 indirect jobs. That's thousands of families benefiting from a single project. You might think that's a small number of employees, but consider the ripple effect on the local and national economy. Imagine the impact of thousands of new jobs in a community. How would that change lives? The project, funded by the Agency for the Promotion of Community Entrepreneurship, is a significant step towards economic development. By creating jobs and reducing wastage, the tomato processing facility will enhance food security, improve the livelihoods of farmers, and contribute to the overall economic growth of Burkina Faso. This initiative not only addresses immediate needs, but also sets a foundation for long-term prosperity and self-sufficiency. The African Promotion and Entrepreneurship Council, APEC, represents a significant $8.1 million investment in the future of Burkina Faso. By processing tomatoes locally, the initiative retains value within the country, boosting the economy and reducing dependency on imports. Burkina Faso, with its abundant resources, shouldn't rely on imported goods especially when it has the capability to produce them domestically. Imported tomato paste is commonly seen in local markets, often priced high and sometimes of dubious quality. This new facility aims to change that by producing high-quality tomato paste locally, making it more affordable and reliable for consumers. Wouldn't you prefer locally produced goods that you can trust over expensive imports? With a processing capacity of 5 tons of tomato paste per hour, this facility will significantly enhance the value of locally grown tomatoes. It's not just about processing, it's about maximizing the worth of their agricultural produce. Since taking office,
President Ibrahim Traore has unveiled a bold vision for Burkina Faso's economic transformation. His plans focus on achieving food self-sufficiency by 2024 through initiatives like Operation AGR Pastoral Offensive and the Presidential Initiative for Food Self-Sufficiency. Traoré is also pushing for industrialization, supporting merchants, and diversifying the economy. He has launched a national economic transformation plan to boost productivity, create jobs, and improve living standards. Rural development is a priority, with projects aimed at building roads, marketplaces, and storage facilities. However, Traoré's vision goes beyond economic reforms. He is tackling corruption, promoting national languages, and asserting Burkina Faso's sovereignty on the global stage. In a bold move, Traoré has even hinted at potentially abandoning the CFA franc, signaling a desire to break free from perceived neocolonial ties. President Ibrahim Traoré's proactive approach in reshaping Burkina Faso's future is evident through his ambitious initiatives and rapid development projects. Despite his commendable vision, Burkina Faso faces significant challenges that could hinder progress. The security situation has deteriorated, with escalating militant violence since Traoré took power. This has exacerbated a humanitarian crisis, leaving nearly 2 million people internally displaced and creating a substantial funding gap. As a landlocked nation with limited resources, implementing large-scale economic projects remains a formidable task. Agriculture, the backbone of the economy, is under threat from desertification and climate change, further complicating the nation's path to self-sufficiency. These challenges underscore the urgency of Traoré's reforms. The pressing question is whether his administration can navigate these obstacles to achieve a transformed Burkina Faso. A key element of his strategy is the $8.1 million tomato processing facility, which will be built over three hectares and is expected to be completed within a year. This rapid development reflects the commitment and efficiency of President Traoré's administration, showcasing a level of swift and decisive action rarely seen in infrastructure projects. The impact of this facility extends beyond tomato processing. It is anticipated to stimulate the creation of community businesses in agriculture and other sectors, thereby boosting overall economic activity and food security in Burkina Faso and its neighboring countries. The facility operates on a nucleus estate contract farming model, which is an innovative approach that involves a central processing plant sourcing 55% of its tomatoes from its own nucleus farm and 45% from a network of smallholder farmers within a 20-mile radius. This model ensures a steady supply of high-quality tomatoes while supporting local farmers by integrating them into the supply chain. By fostering local agriculture and creating jobs, this facility not only addresses immediate economic needs, but also lays the foundation for long-term development. The tomato processing facility in Burkina Faso is more than just a boost to local agricultural productivity. It is a catalyst for economic growth and community development. By adopting a collaborative ownership model, the facility ensures its success and sustainability. This approach not only benefits the local farmers by providing them a steady income, but also creates a ripple effect that uplifts the entire region. The broader picture reveals how a single project can have far-reaching impacts, improving the livelihoods of thousands and strengthening the local economy. In a significant move towards economic sovereignty, President Ibrahim Traoré has also initiated Burkina Faso's first-ever gold refinery. This facility is set to process an impressive 400 kilograms of gold daily, generating 100 direct jobs and 5,000 indirect jobs. The establishment of this refinery is more than just about job creation. It represents a strategic effort to reclaim Burkina Faso's resources. By refining gold locally, the country can increase state revenue and reduce its reliance on exporting raw materials at lower prices. Traoré's vision extends beyond this single project. He plans to establish a state-run mining company and introduce legislation to mandate that 30% of locally mined gold be refined within the country. This strategy aims to build a self-reliant and prosperous Burkina Faso, reducing dependency on foreign markets and maximizing the value derived from its natural resources. President Traoré's vision for Burkina Faso focuses on self-reliance, economic growth, and community empowerment. The tomato processing facility is a prime example of how straightforward yet strategic initiatives can lead to monumental changes. 
Such initiatives not only enhance local production, but also foster a sense of ownership and collaboration among the community, paving the way for sustainable development. Could President Traoré's approach be a model for other African nations? His initiatives demonstrate that with strategic planning and a focus on local resources, significant economic transformation is possible. Other African countries could look to Burkina Faso as an example of how to harness their own resources for national development and economic independence. Thank you for watching. If you found this video insightful, please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on transformative projects across Africa. Together, let's support leaders who are truly making a difference.